Hey, hey, podcast listeners. Welcome to What to Reading, the podcast where I connect with fellow book enthusiasts to chat about our latest reads, the topics that fuel our bookish obsession, and all those things that keep us glued to those pages. Really quick, before we get into today's episode, I want to make sure that you know about a brand new subscription box service. I launched Cover Snob over the summer, and I'm so excited to give you guys all of the details. Cover Snob is a romance sprayed edge edition box that will be featuring BIPOC authors. With this box, I'm excited to continue to really help promote and champion BIPOC romance authors who are often overlooked by the publishing industry. Check the Cover Snob link in the show notes to head over to the website to view our current selection and subscription options. Hello friends. In today's episode, you're going to be listening to a buddy discussion that a group of us had a few months ago about Anna Maria and the Fox. I want to give a quick Spoiler warning, if you have not read this book and you do not want to be spoiled, you should probably skip this episode. If you have read the book and you don't mind a couple of spoilers, then you are in for a treat. We talked about reading historical romances. For a few of the readers, this was their first historical romance that they had ever read. So that conversation was really interesting. We talked, of course, about what we loved and what kind of missed the mark for us on this book. And then we get into our final thoughts and ratings. I also want to make one quick note that we are not historians. So anything that we're talking about in terms of historical context is either from our memory, from schooling, or what we did for a quick Google search. But I definitely suggest to please look up all historical references for yourself. Okay, let's get into it. Anyway, my first like thing that I wanted to ask you guys is, So I know Brittany and I are like huge on historical like romances, like of course, Bridgerton and then like that, like open the floodgates. I love Beverly Jenkins. Have you, Alika or you, Rissa, like ever, like are you guys readers of historical romance? No, I am now though. (laughs) (laughs) This was my first. This was your first. Okay, okay. Oh, I'm so excited. So just off of, off of like what you guys read, I'm guessing it was positive. You're going to continue to read historical romance. Oh yeah. I already have the, um, well, at least for this series, the Luna sisters, I've already had like ready to pre-order the, uh, Elizabeth or um, Isabel's book. Yeah. I liked it. I mean, yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Okay. Brittany, I don't know if you have anything to add or say, like, I know you just, you love it all. I loved it. This set a high bar though. I felt like there was like some substance to, it wasn't just like a romance. So yes. this set a high bar for it guys. I agree. Mm-hmm. yes yes and I I think that was one of my so I don't know like you guys tell me going into this did you know anything about the French occupation in Mexico like did you have any context prior to this I did no. vaguely, no. but not, not enough to like help or hurt the book it was just like you know, you know like in high school or college you like read over stuff so from that but not like, extensive Brittany, you're shaking your head no. Marissa, no, no. I had no context of this. No, I didn't know much about that at all. Same, 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 same. Agreed. I didn't, yeah, I didn't know. And I think even at one point, like they mentioned Napoleon and I was like, what year is it? Like, I just, I had no, like, I, and I was talking to Brittany about this. Like, I have no concept of historical timelines when it's not in relation to what was going on in the U.S. Like, if that's not, like, then I have no idea. Or, like, maybe, like, World War II. But, like, other than that, I have no concept of, like, things that were happening. Um, And so I kept having to try and figure out, like, timeline. Because, like, yeah, them mentioning Napoleon, I was like, wait, what a, wait, what, what year is this? Like, I was just so lost. I Even though I felt like it started off slower, I loved her writing. And I think we messaged that about that, like, it started out slow, but I feel like it slow, it wasn't slow, like, like for, it was slow, but it was more of just, she was giving us a lot of information to, like, get to know these characters, which I really enjoyed. Slow to me. Like, it felt, like, so slow in the beginning, and then the end was, like, boom, 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 like, all this stuff. I, I agree on both. So, yeah, I'm I'm on the end of, yes, it felt very slow in the beginning but I also agree Alika like I see like now being at the end like I see why she kind of had to set 
some of that up about why they had to come going there. I feel like she spent a lot of time on like their, like the differences between them and like, London society and what was going on and what was proper and not proper and like all of all of the things um parliament and like all of that like I feel like she spent a lot of time doing that but yeah it, it did still I was kind of like okay let's mm -hmm. let's get going like I want to see more interaction. Yeah, I, I actually, hold on. So let me pull this up. I actually noted something because, okay, so on page like 26, this is Anna Maria talking to, I don't know, one of the people. And she says, do you suppose anything outside of Europe is incapable of beauty and culture and art? And I was like, oh. That's the same quote I highlighted. That was definitely a bar. That was, that was good. good. Okay, okay, okay. And it kind of started out like, like I could, like they are very feisty, clearly. Like when the guys try to like, when they land and the guys try and like take advantage of them, right? As soon as they get off the ship and they're like, no, 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 no. Like, she, what did she say? Like, I'll stab you in the eye or something. I'm like, okay, <laughs> you guys are definitely different. Like, okay, so give me some context. I wasn't sure. So for Brittany and JJ who have read more of these, like, it felt like, um, okay, placed in a historical time, obviously, but then like, it had to me like a modern bent kind of agenda or like, like viewpoints at some times. Like, is that how it's typically written? I guess I, I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but I was like, oh, that feels kind of directly related to something that was happening in modern times. I don't know. Is this the way most of those books flow, sound like? I felt like this book read a lot to me, like a historical fiction. And then there was like a romance interest in there. And I think that's why you guys are reading that it was starting off so slow. Because a historical fiction, that's more my jam. I'm like, yes, yeah. I'm a historical fiction. Um, but it's giving you a lot of background and stuff in the beginning. They're not fast paced books at all because it's like history with the fiction element in it. Um, and I felt like that was how the book was written heavy. Um, I thought it was an interesting twist. I'm wondering if you're talking about like the main character, Gideon. He came from like his grandmother was enslaved and then he was trying to move forward anti-slavery like legislation in, in Britain, but they did actually do it. So I'm, I'm thinking like they put that fiction in there, but on the historical background, Britain had abolished slavery in like 1807 and this book is like 1835-ish, but they started enacting a lot of legislation that was like preventing slave trade across the world. Like, so I feel like Britain refused to do business with the countries that were still actively participating in slave trade. And then their Navy, after this book takes place, and maybe that's what they're building up to, they started sending out their British Navy to attack the, the slave vessels that were going from like Africa to the um like to the Americas and to the Caribbean. So I'm wondering if that's what they were hitting on. Like I feel like that's what they're building up to. Oh gotcha. Okay. I um I one of the things I think okay that I think I'm talking about was more like kind of like the feminism of the stirs. I was trying to place like is that like his yes. I don't know historically accurate or is that kind of like a modern take on it or where the girls have been like that I, I guess I just don't know like would they have been that kind of forward while it sometimes being like no that feels very like you know that time period but then other things felt like very yeah I would believe that women were the not baby. really feminists or like didn't have they weren't that bold and like that I think that component is to attract us readers because it's really hard to read about weak women I can't I yeah. can't deal with it <laughs> So, so I feel like it's that. And then they were supposed to be like more forward and outgoing because they were uh, Mexican versus Mexican. like Britain. So I feel like that, but you're, you're, you're right, Rissa. I think that they write, like, they always got to write a strong woman that's against the patriarchy. That would not have happened. Okay. I think that was my question. I wasn't sure if romances were more like that, that like these women were vocal and were going to be involved in parliament and writing his bills and that kind of stuff. Or like, if that was... They're, they yeah, usually write one in there to attract us. Cause, okay, yeah, yeah. interesting. Okay. Yeah, and I think it's it, it can be kind of like, I, I honestly think it's both. So I do think that there are, um, there are 
probably women in history who were, you know, who very few though. I don't think this is like the majority who were like, who had the husband who listened to her and asked for her opinion, who was educated and had, you know what I mean? Had those things. Like I can think like just off top, um, the author who wrote Jane Eyre, Um, and I only know this because I'm like, I'm reading a, a retelling of that right now. I didn't know, like when it was originally published, it was published as a male author. And then it wasn't until years later, it came out that like, no, this was actually a female author. So I think there are probably small pockets of women in there who were doing things like that. Um, but yeah, Brittany's right. I think they, that historical fiction writes these strong female characters to show strength in like that there were probably women, I, I don't know, that there were probably women during that time period that believed and felt and, you know, at, you know, were like this or what we would like to believe that these women maybe existed or could exist and that there were men out there who weren't threatened. Because Bridgerton, all of the females in Bridgerton's books are heavily independent, yeah. strong-willed yeah. minded and same thing with all of Beverly Jenkins books like they're not like the oh I just I'm trying to think no they're not just like the oh I just want to get married and have kids like they all like yes maybe they do want to be married and have kids but they also like have their own ambitions themselves okay interesting that's good to know yeah I was gonna say the same thing especially in the context of like they still quote-unquote knew their place right so it's not like they had much say they were just a little bit more vocal um from this perspective than just falling to the back and and, and their woman that's how least how i saw it i always find it fascinating how like oppressed they were it's like to a different level because they didn't actually get formal education if they were like of a certain class then maybe their parents hired a governess to teach them but they didn't go away to school the boys did um and then they couldn't own any property they didn't they couldn't inherit anything um They got married off intentionally to forward the family. They had a, a dowry, like they had zero. So I feel like realistically, if even if they did have a mind to like not, like they wanted something different, what avenue could they really take kind of? Like, you know, they could do little things like writing, you're right, she wrote. But then realistically, if she wrote the proceeds, she would have to do something weird to even get the money. She wouldn't necessarily be even able to profit off of that. Like- <laughs> I don't know just thinking like oh I can't imagine like not being able to have my own bank account mm -mm. or like a say and I I literally just report recorded a podcast episode and I was talking about like reading um A Thousand Splendid Sons and like the fact that like she gets married off like it's like in that book like she like basically her dad is like so this is like I I basically sold you this is your new husband go enjoy your life and that's it. Like she has no say there is nothing. She's crying. She doesn't want to leave her family and there's nothing she can do because it doesn't matter because she's a female. And it's just like, yeah. And, and that's not even historical in the sense of what we're talking, right? That book was set right. in the nineties. So it's just still like, Oh, rough. So what did you guys think of the Luna sisters? Did you Like, do you have a favorite of the three? I know it was heavily on Anna on this one. Um, I'm, I honestly, I, I was intrigued by Gabby. I just, I, because there was so little on her. I kind of wanted to like know more. I liked Gabby. She seemed like a spitfire, like fun. I liked her. And okay, so I read it and I was reading it at like triple speed this morning to get <laughs> through it. Did we ever find out Isabella was like, looking for things right like oh, yeah. she was, is she a spy like that was my question yeah. that I was like is she a spy because yeah she was putting herself into some situations and that we don't know yet that should come up next book I'm assuming yeah I didn't that's what I'm hoping for yeah. yeah that's what I'm hoping for like when I was reading I was, I was like okay now that we got all this backstory I really hope that even though it's technically Isabella's story we learn more Yeah. to find out if Gabby is like her, her dad sent her with a different motive or something or maybe she just knows I don't know but I'm yeah. curious to see or wanted to make dad happy so she's yeah. like trying to find information for him yeah yeah but I she did think that was me. a big part of the story this story though was like 
the sisterhood, like getting the sisters friendly, like rather like united rather than pitted against each other. So I guess they could take that either way. And like she could double cross them or would she never dare? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was such a, like, she was making me, I, she was making me nervous. So like she gets caught and then like in the next house, like she's doing the same thing. And I'm just like, did you not learn? Did you not learn? And you're yeah. not good at this. Stop it. Yes. <laughs> Down the room, just look around a little bit before, <laughs> or have a like have a lookout, have like have a valid excuse. Like if I get caught, this is what my excuse was. Because like I think she was like, oh, I was looking for the bathroom. Like, dude, you're deep in the office. You clearly are not looking for the bathroom. No, wait till that person is like you know that they're somewhere else. I, I yeah, she was making me nervous too. I do like Hannah. I think she's you know she was a strong character. I really liked her vocalization like she was very vocal and I really liked Gideon I really liked Gideon he was just a he was a sweetheart and I think so there was a part in here like I guess I don't know if I missed it but like it wasn't until page like 91 that I realized he was black oh I feel like they didn't come out right and say it but in the beginning I was like Like the first, I was like taking notes on a sticky. I was like, is this dude black? Like, because he kept referencing something, but you're right. I don't feel like they outright said it yeah. and his background, uh, like that his it was, grandmother. It was implied and then it actually came out later when you got to learn more about it. Yeah. Because I yeah. did the same thing. When, I, when it was explicit, I was like, oh. So I feel like it was like vaguely implied. Yeah. Because they were, they were making references that he wasn't entirely welcome in society and he was kind of an outcast and I feel like you're right it was heavily implied and I think that she did that on purpose but it made sense yeah I loved how they could go back and forth their talk and discussions about like international relations was fascinating I was like yes so the slowness in the beginning for me I enjoyed I was like more more international relations more (laughs) politics talk Yes, that was good. And then even the conversation that they had while they, um, after they saw Darwin, right? Like, again, Mm -hmm. concept of time, because I was like, that was bad. Like, I just like, I'm, I'm like, why does this not seem like this timeline is all over the place? Um, But, you know, even when they had that talk, I was just like, I love, like, they can sit and have these intellectual conversations. And he's not, like, intimidated by it. Like, he's fascinated by it. Like, she had said something to him. And he was like, excellent point i'm like i love like i love this that he's listening to her and they're actually like dialoguing i loved how serious he was he was like serious because he was so determined about what his goal was in parliament and i like that she kind of like brought him out of not brought him out of his ambition or anything but showed him that there's more to life and like i don't know i thought that was cute cool that like she did both like she made him kind of relax and be more of who he was but then also like wanted to help him with his parliament goal very true yeah and I liked like the little um I don't know again I'm gonna have to I should look this up actually now there was like the little nod I don't want to say it was a nod to Lady Whistledown and Bridgerton but like just the gossip papers and Mm -hmm. how they mentioned like how he was like smiling and he never smiles and he was Mm -hmm. so mad that he was mentioned in the gossip papers and I was just like for me that was just so fun because like I kind of felt like we were getting a little just taste of like that that petty society type drama because then and then he was like well I'm gonna stay away from her and he did until what was it her sister at that poetry like whatever poetry thing yeah Mm -hmm. like they tried to call someone or they tried to call her out maybe and it like it they flipped it on he flipped it on its head and which was which was smart and great and I also like that to your point like that he was being respectful because he when he found out that she was like already betrothed and he liked her that he was yeah. like nah I'm gonna keep this to myself but then also his feelings were real so he's trying to like work that out I was like that's pretty I like that approach yeah mm-hmm. there was a oh my gosh she said something when you said betrothed she said something and I was just like geez okay so she says like. And my future husband is welcome to share his opinion when he's locked his chain around my finger and his surname around my neck. And I was just like, good God, do you not? (laughs) (laughs) Tell us how you really feel. You're present. Yes. I thought that was interesting. I took it two ways too. Like, I am so independent that you have to do all of these things for me to 
to step up to the plate of wifeness or whatever. Like, you don't get none of this wife stuff until you do all the proper things. I thought the author did a really good job. Like, Anna Marie was, like, a very well-rounded character. Like, but, like, a lot of those sides still felt believable. Like I said, the, some of the feminism things, I was like, really? Could they have gone that far? I don't know. But, like, the way she had to stand up to her dad, but conflicted with, like, she knew her role, but also knew to when to step out, but also knew when the role could benefit her. Like all those things played into like who she was and played in so well to Gideon, I felt like too. And I guess obviously you can do that when you're writing a romance. They're like perfect for each other. But she seemed like all these different sides of her still made sense to me. Like they didn't feel like sometimes like fairy tale land or like, oh, uh, you know, like she seemed like a that could still be realistic to have all those different conflicting sides. Yeah, I can't imagine. Right. And I think there was even like a little bit of a mention of how like the sisters were almost kind of kept separate and almost like pitted against each other at some points, like in like like in a competitive way. I I liked one. I liked the dedication to the oldest sibling. I don't know. Alika, you're the oldest. Yeah. Brittany, you're the oldest. Rissa, are you? No, no. I have two older brothers, so I'm the oldest daughter but I'm also the only girl so <laughs> okay I have a okay. younger brother as well okay got it so yeah and I'm the oldest so like I just I kind of felt like I understood a little bit of like the mentality of like looking out right for everyone and making sure like you are almost at times like second parent um so I kind of understood some of like the sentiment and the things that she was saying but then also like I totally got like her people pleasing nature of wanting her dad to be happy like clearly she's marrying a man that she does not have a care to marry and who also sounds like he's very open about his mistress that he has yes. yeah ew mm -hmm. and she was she was gonna do it for the better of the family or because that's what her dad had asked of her yeah so I, I agree I think it was it was an interesting dynamic to have to kind the of dad? all of that the dad sounded like not just demanding. He sounded like kind of abusive towards them too. Like the stuff, the yeah. way that they were acting and the stuff that he had asked of them and like demanded of them. I'm like, I just feel like it was because she was even saying that she was like nervous to hear from him. And like, it sounded like she was getting out of an abusive relationship when she's talking about the reference to her dad and her relationship with her mom and the fact that her mom wasn't writing because she felt like, you know, it would go against the dad and stuff like that. I was like, that man. I, don't, I, I thought it was most telling when I think she was telling Gideon about her father. And he said, like, she said something about, um, did he love your mom? And she, she it was like, well, she, he loved my mom's money or status. Mm -hmm. or Like, it that, was more yeah. about what the mom could offer than the mom herself or something. I don't remember exactly what it was, but, like, that seemed a pretty clear, like, in her mind, like, seeing her dad very clearly for who he was yeah 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 and in, and in, he was ambitious I agree yeah I think I think they did say something like that that because I think the mom had a title or came from more of an upper class yeah. than the dad did which is interesting because why would another father or whoever the head of the household is okay their status daughter to marry a non-status man but I think they were pretty clear that he was like up and coming. I think that they had, I feel like they were trying to tell us a little bit of the history of Mexico. Cause I don't think that they had the same caste system as like Britain in, in the same way. Mm. And I feel like there was, there, there was a little bit of education and Googling that I really should have done. Cause I, it was flying over my head a little bit, but that she was from like almost like, not indigenous Mexican people, but like she was, mm. that's what it was. Like they they didn't have the same, they don't have like the same caste and royalty as like Britain, but she was higher in status because in essence, like of where her family was actually from Mexico. Um, her heritage or and something? Then, yeah, like the heritage component hmm. brought him up in status. And then, yeah, because okay. he came from working class. Interesting, again, just trying to wrap my head around what happened and how you know how their systems worked and I think that you know that that's almost kind of the point because 
now they're being thrown into this English society where things are a little different or a lot of different. Oh my gosh. And like when she was at the party and she was drinking and she didn't know she was drinking. Yeah. <laughs> like how, like she was like, oh, I just let it taste it nasty. And I'm like, what? Like, it, she had never drank before. I know, but like, I don't know. I'm just thinking of the taste of alcohol. Like she thought she was in a new society. I guess. But I love that, that her night. sisters were like, uh, what? This is your first time? Yeah, like... it's your first time. You never, <laughs> never had any of us. What do you think about Gideon telling her? Like, do you think his approach, like, during in that scene? I know she got really upset. And I think more so because it was, like, triggering for her. Um, because, it like, her dad, like, you know, that situation with her dad and how on her he was and, and all of that. Or maybe upset and, and embarrassed and just took it out on Gideon. But I felt like, I don't know, I felt like the conversation got away from both of them. And they ended up in a spot that... I don't know, maybe they they didn't think they were going to end up in. I don't know, I just felt like, I felt bad for Gideon at the end of the conversation because I was like, I I really thought he was trying to like educate and tell her and she got like really defensive and closed off and then he was trying to correct himself mm -hmm. and he wasn't doing a great job and it just got worse. Yeah. I have like, of course, notes for days like the, where she tried to give her sister like whitening cream. Um, <laughs> my god that was <laughs> that was painful i thought okay so then that that lady i feel like she meant well i thought i felt like the uncle really did care for the dot for the sisters there was some point in the middle that i was like okay he really did care for them and i i thought it was it was like one thing to take them in i don't know if take them in but look out for them but then I feel like later throughout the book, it showed that there was some instances that it really showed that he actually cared about them. Uh, but I feel like that woman meant well. She just really didn't know. <laughs> she knew how to be a good guardian to them. But I feel like she also let them do whatever they wanted to do, which I also yeah. appreciated. So I was like, she was supposed to be there. Like, what is it? What do they call it in society? They're like, not a chaperone? guardian chaperone yes like oh. she was supposed to be a good chaperone but she let them do whatever which i did appreciate because i feel like they're not used to being chaperoned when they were in mexico they were sheltered in the house because of who their dad was but i feel like they could if they wanted to go for a walk at the park and stuff they didn't have to have a chaperone the same way right i mean he, he sent them to england the three of them yeah. like on their own like deuces so okay so let's get into like the I guess like the climax of the story, freaking Lord Tyrell. Whew. I I didn't see that. Well, okay, so I thought he was gonna come for Isabel, like do something about uh. Isabel because he was she was the one that he caught in the office. I did not see him walking out of that room with an arranged marriage to Anna. That threw me off guard. I had no clue that that was coming. Yeah. And then Mr. Gideon, right time, right place. <laughs> that was perfect. What if he wasn't there? This whole thing would have just been a whole different outcome. <laughs> I know. I know. Can you imagine like if it, if he would have announced that they were getting married like that night and Gideon would have been like, wait a minute, what? Yeah, that wouldn't have gone well. Um, so you're right, Rissa. Like, I think at that point, like, we just sped through everything. Now we're like trying to escape out of the house without people seeing yeah. and going off into Dawson. I think the guy's name was Dawson, going off into Dawson's like estate and this quickie marriage, and then them and like like it was just like you're right, boom, 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 boom. Which was I enjoyed the latter half of the book way more than the first bit. It just went from like this build up to like this action adventure all of a sudden this guy's like his best friend or like good buddy is just like shot and killed on his horse and he's like sorry about that but like gone to the next like I don't know it was just like I agree the pacing of that kind of it took a big turn yeah and I was telling Brittany like so like the whole Lord Terrell situ situation, I thought like, because I knew he wasn't just gone and it wasn't just going to go away. So in my mind, I'm like, oh, okay, he's going to start spreading rumors about them around England and in Parliament. He's going to like make her seem like they had to rush off because she's compromised uh -huh. and like all of that kind of thing. But like dude shows up and he's like, actually, no, I'm going to kidnap you. 
Bruce is right. It turned into an action adventure. I was excited. <laughs> I was <laughs> pleasantly surprised. It threw me off, but it was good. I was like, oh, okay. And I think at that point it was like 80% of the book. And so I'm like, yeah. Now he ha now Gideon has to find her. Like, what? Mm -hmm. I mean, I enjoyed it, but I just wasn't, I wasn't expecting it. Yeah. And of course we get our happily ever after and I love it. I always love when a um, forced marriage, <laughs> a forced <laughs> marriage in these uh, period pieces like happens. It's always for the best. When you know, it's a good forced that. marriage, not like a. Oh yeah, yeah, right here. Yeah. Icky, gross man. Yeah. Um, okay. I was going to ask you guys though. Have you read any of these like uh, historical romances on audio? Have you ever listened to them? I listened mm -hmm. to a few of the Bridgerton books on audio. How was it on audio? Um, I liked it. I, I always listen at double speed and there's like some Spanish phrases thrown in and stuff. And I didn't mm -hmm. always catch like, oh, what was that? Or like, oh, she was speaking Spanish there. So some of those I may have missed. I thought she was an okay reader. I just, I like was like, could tell like, okay, there's going to be, you know, some scenes coming up and like, what's going to happen there. I didn't love her like male voice, but I thought she did well with the female stuff. I liked all that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it can be a little awkward. So it sounds like everyone's going to be picking up the second book or like at least interested in interested. continuing. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I'm so excited. Yes. Yeah. I love watching an author like, yeah, Alika, when they're going through that, like, launch of their book. It's really exciting to kind of, because it's kind of like you kind of get like a behind the scenes. And so clearly we saw like, in my mind, we're seeing how she's going to be setting up these last two books. So Isabel is going to be with Dawson, um, who, you know, I kind of caught like a little bit of that, like, when he gives her the book and I think he says like, it's kind of scandalous. So don't let the other, you know, I, I kind of caught like, okay, 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 okay. There's something there. And then oh, I can't think of the other friend's name, but the other friend and Gabby, um, oh, because they be do not seem like they're getting along. So it seems like that's right. going to be like. Enemies to lovers. Yeah. And maybe if we, I'm wondering if we already saw there because sometimes in the books when they have like the it's the standalone romances but you know you have the glimpses of the characters usually they don't line it up like this so maybe they're going to give us like more historical maybe these are going to focus on the historical fiction component because it's not like we have to meet new characters necessarily mm -hmm. um and I am hoping we get a little bit more with Isabel like maybe that'll free up for us to get a background on her and what's going on with that I think she's a spy, or I just want her to be a spy. She's like, not a good one. Can she be a spy? <laughs> also true. Or maybe he will teach her how to be a better spy. Like, maybe, like, that's their, like, you know, she's a woman. No one's really paying attention to her in society. She can kind of get in and out because what does a woman know? Um, and so, like, maybe that'll be a great way for her to get information for Dawson or for the family. And um, Okay, JJ, I listened on audio, but I also have the hard copy and it has some um, questions in the back of it okay so one of do you mind if I read one of them oh absolutely go for it okay so I think that's the last one number 11 says pressure from society is a huge aspect in this book and in the historical romance genre overall how do you feel when people you read about about the way people once cared so deeply about societal etiquette and norms and do you think that concern has really changed I don't know why but when they were I think it was that the they were at the opera and it was kind of like this whole networking situation of like whose box who was seen in. And I was just like, oh, this is how like Instagram plays out in real time to me like these days. <laughs> just kind of like who you're seen with or like, I, I don't know, I guess like flirting with other people, sliding. Because I, I was like, who acts like this anymore? And I was like, oh, maybe it's like, it's what I, I don't know, like how would that translate to nowadays? I think you're right. Like, like maybe like the Grammys or like. Yeah. Um, like the Oscars or something like that. Like, what was it? Like, Beyonce was at one of those. Clearly, it must have been the Grammys. And someone was, like, trying to, like, beeline and get to her. And it was, like, a meme. 
And then I think she also had Blue Ivy. And so like Blue, like Blue Ivy was like looking like she was ready to go. And like people were like the face that you make when mom won't stop talking. And like, yeah. I don't know. It's so crazy. Like between watching Bridgerton again and then like <laughs> reading the books, I just listened to one of, the, one of the books over again. But they go into so much detail about like when a woman stands up, then you're supposed to stand up because you're like in the POV of the man at that time. And then he was talking about like, I think it was like they were in the sitting room and the sister was there. She stood up and she was like, I he was like, I really should stand up. S good society tells me that I should, but she's just my sister. So I'm going to sit here. I'm tired or something like that. It's mm -hmm. just like little things that are just so insane. Like it was, you're not supposed to be alone like mm -hmm. if you're a younger woman, you're not supposed to be alone with a guy at any time. You always have to have a chaperone with you. Um, if you're in good society, I think that there's a point with your like, if you're in a lower part of the cast, then it doesn't matter. Yeah. Or if you're a spinster and mm -hmm. a spinster is like 23. <laughs> If you've been out in society for a couple seasons and don't have a husband, then you're considered a spinster. So then it doesn't matter. Like propriety doesn't matter that much because you're not most likely not going to be married anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Which made me really wonder, like the whole scene of them going to see Darwin, like because they went just the two of them. So clearly the lady, their chaperone didn't know. And I think they were very clear, like she couldn't know where they were going. Yeah. But just that you have these two women who are sitting here listening to this lecture of, a, you know, from a man, like it seemed that I think was probably that in the church, them going to visit church was probably the two things where I was like, is this historically accurate? Like, would they have been able to do, go on their own for them to sit and, and not be ostracize like what are you two doing here like would Gideon have really come up and sat down and just started talking to her or would he have been like you shouldn't be here alone type thing and then when they when he came to pick them up to go to church I'm like so he's coming to pick up two unwed sisters mm -hmm. to take them to a church mm -hmm. or three because all three of them were there which, okay, sure, nothing was going to happen, but they still had no female chaperone or male mm -hmm. relative chaperone. So I think those were kind of the two things that I was kind of like, I don't know, like historically accurate, how mm -hmm. if this kind of fits. Because they were ostracized when she drank too much. That too, yeah. She was drinking in public and everybody knew it. I don't, you know, she was getting a little tipsy and she was like ostracized and it was talked about for a long time. Like I felt like, I don't know. She was almost kicked out of society for this one little, like, I don't know. It didn't, yeah. yeah, it didn't even seem like that big of a deal, but it was so insane how big of an issue it caused in the whole town. I couldn't imagine having to, like, keep up with, like, like I mean, yes. not that I can't imagine, but I think, especially even growing up, like, in church, like, there were, like, norms, societal norms, right? Like, there was never, like, I oh, oh my God, oh, I hate it. I used to have to wear a slip. Ew. Or have like a lap scarf when I wore a skirt because something needs to go over your knees so that your legs like aren't fully showing. Like, so I feel like even still, like there are some of those, like at least on the modesty scale, there are some of those things like depending on the shirt that I wore, if it was low cut, which still makes me self-conscious to this day, I had to wear a tank top under it because like showing too much cleavage is like, you're it's immodest it's not a good thing and so like and seriously like to this day like my sister will be like you know you don't have to wear an undershirt like it's okay like if your bra is showing a little bit and it just it it still just makes me so self-conscious that it's not the right thing to do you know quote unquote so I think some of those things are still definitely like around so what would you guys what what if you had to give a rating one to five what would you say I I'll go first. I'm definitely at like, it's not a five star, but I think I, I think I'm sitting at a, probably a 3.5 or four. I think it was a five star for me only because historical fiction is my jam. And then we had the romance in there. I'd say a three a and a half for me. It was out of like my three. usual stuff and like, I enjoyed it, but it wouldn't be like what I'm grabbing for every time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I feel like it was a 4, 4.5-ish. 
one, I'm just getting into this historical fiction and I really, I'm feeling it. So mm-hmm. I feel like if I had read more, I don't know if I would have liked it less or more if I've read more, but mm-hmm. so far this is my jam and I'm looking forward to reading the series and more of this genre. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm glad, I'm glad to hear it. Definitely. Um, yeah, I want to read more. And it's so crazy that this is like our first romance, I think that we've read. And it was, it was good just to read something a little bit lighter, a little bit, you know, fluffier and not at, it's still learning, but not as like heavy as some of like the past books have been. Hey guys, popping back in here to round out the episode. I hope you enjoyed our conversation on Anna Maria and the Fox. And as always, I love to invite you to join us on our next buddy read. Listen to the end credits for more information. Talk to you later. Hey there, one last thing before you leave. Are you looking for a group to read and chat about books with? I'd love to have you join us on our current buddy read of Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin. Our virtual discussion will be on Sunday, September 8th. All details, including the link to join and our monthly book thread, can be found in the Geneva app, which you can access by clicking the link in the show notes. Quick reminder that all books mentioned in this episode are also linked in the show notes. Thanks so much for joining us today and wishing you a wonderful reading adventure until we meet again. Chat soon.